The luxurious private lives of the world's most notorious dictators have been shrouded in mystery, but today we're going to uncover their most lavish spending habits. These dictators have power, influence and money beyond your wildest dreams. They had secret palaces and hidden islands all over the world. They drove luxury vehicles and bought weapons made of solid gold, from Rolexes to yachts, and hunting lodges to bulletproof trains. This is how five famous dictators spent their fortunes. Fidel Castro in 2006, Forbes estimated that Fidel Castro his personal net worth may have reached $900 million. Cuba's communist dictator often put on a humble appearance, but behind the curtains, he was living a life of immense luxury. Castro was born on Las Monarcas Farm, his father's prosperous 25,000-acre 400 employees sugar plantation. After reaching heights of power he lived in Punto Cero or Point Zero, his top-secret 75-acre Havana home, resembling a vast military compound. The property included a golf course many types of fruit trees, and six greenhouses where he grew his own food. Castro and his family members each had their own personal cow which would provide them with their preferred milk. Castro also had a private basketball court in his own hospital, which reportedly housed two people who shared his blood type in case of emergencies. While away from his compound, the Cuban leader would spend time at his private island Coyote Edra. He traveled there on one of two identical jetliners. The tropical getaway consisted of two islands connected with a 700-foot-long bridge. Castro had a bungalow built there with a terrace overlooking the sea. He also had a 200-foot landing stage built for his private yacht, the Aqua Rama II which was decorated in exotic wood imported from Angola. The island featured a floating bar and restaurant, as well as to tame dolphins who would do tricks for Castro and his guests. While on vacation there, he was reportedly served whiskey or scotch on the rocks, and would spend a lot of time deep sea diving. The dictator is estimated to have owned up to 20 properties, including like a letter del Rosario, with its private marina and a chalet in Pinar del Rio. The one luxury item Castro was often spotted wearing was a Rolex. He's been photographed in a Rolex GMT Master with bicolor bezel and a gold Rolex State Just. He usually wore them at the same time and on the same wrist, with some speculating that he wore two watches to keep the time in both Havana and Moscow. His reference 6542 GMT Master sells today for between $40,100-$1,000 while another favorite the reference 1675 can sell for up to $30,000. He was also seen wearing a reference 6536 Submariner, which can fetch prices upwards of $80,000. Fidel Castro was a fan of luxury cars. His main source of transportation was a Land Rover, but his reported favorite was a $50,000 Oldsmobile. He also spent a lot of time in his Mercedes-Benz 600, worth over $100,000. Saddam Hussein. While president of Iraq, Saddam Hussein built quite a reputation for himself and it wasn't all based on brutality. United States officials have said that Sudan's wealth ranged from $2 billion to $40 billion. It's hard to come to an exact number, because it's rumored that he may have hidden away as much as $30 billion. Forbes reports that much of his money was spent on palaces across the desert. However, his most noteworthy purchases are his gold weapons. He had a golden Tabuk, an Iraqi variant of the AK-47 and a gold M77. Rifle which eventually sold at auction for over $48,000. In 2014, another $1 million worth of his gold weapons was found in the U.S. They've been smuggled into the country by members of the Marine Corps. The exact number of blinged-out weapons he owned is not public knowledge, but it's believed that many are still out there somewhere. As for his palaces, Saddam is thought to have built between 80 and 100 at all over Iraq, United Nations documents highlight eight main palaces that all together comprise more than 1,000 buildings. They were decorated with marble and gold, and featured large bedrooms and Baroque-style furniture. Some even had rooftop swimming pools, the ones we know about are now abandoned and didn't ruin. Sedan's wealth and power was so massive that he often ruined expensive things just to prove a point. He's rumored to have burned his son's luxury car collection, which included Porsches and Ferraris to teach him a lesson. He also owned a yacht that he never actually got to enjoy. The 270-foot superyacht was named Bosma Breeze. It was fitted with marble-tiled bathrooms and a large presidential suite. It cost $25 million to build, but it's worth about $100 million today. In the 1980s, Sudan gave it to King Fahd bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia as a gift. Since then, its opulent interior has been refurbished, and it's now moored as a hotel. Muammar Gaddafi Muammar Gaddafi was one of the world's richest people. The Libyan dictator was estimated to be worth $200 million at the end of his life in 2011. 
Opulent things owned by Qaddafi included golden statues and giant portraits, not to mention secret places hidden all over the world. His luxury homes included number 7 Winnington Close in the UK. It's located in an affluent suburb and has 8 suite style bedrooms plus a swimming pool and jacuzzi. It also has a private movie theater and a lavish marble foyer. The home last sold for $16 million. Qaddafi reportedly spent an average of $2.2 million a month on parties. He paid for celebrities like Beyonce and Mariah Carey to take the stage at his beachside bashes. They're estimated to have made more than $1 million, each performing for the dictator. Qaddafi was known to travel in style. He had an Airbus 501 that he bought for $120 million in 2006 from a Saudi prince. It had silver leather sofas and 50 first-class seats for his entourage. There was a jacuzzi on board and a private cinema. While at sea, Qaddafi enjoyed his 92-foot yacht as Sunseeker Predator 95 it's now being stripped and turned into a hydrogen-fueled luxury vessel. Qaddafi these cars were as safe as they were luxurious. He ordered a custom bulletproof Maybag 57S coupe, of which only 8 were built. His model was recently resold for $1.15 million. The dictator would also travel in an armored BMW 7 Series and a stretched-out S-Class Mercedes. He owned a custom Fiat 500 that he had built for $260,000. Perhaps the strangest car he owned was the one he designed himself the Libyan rocket, which had a 230 horsepower V6 engine and the nose and tail of a rocket. To further prioritize his safety, Qaddafi would travel with a giant luxurious Bedouin tent. It was bulletproof and allowed him and his entourage to completely avoid hotels. Kim Jong-il, the second supreme leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-il, liked living the good life. It's estimated that his personal expenses comprise 20% of North Korea's entire annual budget, and that he had $4 billion stashed away in European banks. His suits were custom tailored out of skirbel, cashmere and silk, which cost $300 a yard. Four yards were needed for every suit, so his daily wear cost a minimum of $1,200 and that's not including the tailoring costs. His favorite shoes were from the Italian brand Marashi, he preferred Omega watches, which he would give as gifts to his staff. He loved Perrier bottled water, and reportedly spent $800,000 a year on Hennessy Cognac. His love of luxury goods was so strong that in 2006, the US placed sanctions on some of his favorite high-end items. The banned products included yacht segways, rare stamps, and Chanel. Number 5 Satellite images of North Korea have exposed some of Kim Jong-il's palaces. They reportedly feature everything from golf courses and swimming pools to giant water slides. His manicured main residence was in a neighborhood reserved for North Korea's ruling elite. He inherited it from his father Kim Il-sung. A woman who formerly worked as part of his pleasure squad revealed that he had multiple homes around the capital city, Sam with 164 feet long underground swimming pools. The supreme leader had a favorite car to get around in a Mercedes-Benz S600 guard limousine. He was afraid of flying so instead, he would travel in one of his six luxury trains. While Kim was on his famous 2001 trip to Moscow, he reportedly had roasted donkey and fresh lobsters flown to the train every day. He ate his food with silver chopsticks and washed it down with Bordeaux and Beaujolais wines. His trains had conference rooms and audience chambers, as well as opulent bedrooms with satellite phones and flat-screen TVs. While traveling, he was preceded by one train and followed by another 100 security personnel were always sent ahead of his convoy to secure his destination. Kim was said to be an avid film collector, having collected more than 20,000 VHS and DVDs in his lifetime. Italian chef Armando Falanes who once worked for the dictator detailed some of Kim's other odd preferences. He would ask for sashimi carved from live fish and send chef Alanis all over the world to procure ingredients for Lanas would go to Uzbekistan to buy caviar and to Thailand for mangoes and papayas. Even stranger, it's reported that Kim had a team of 200 scientists cultivating the perfect diet to ensure he had a long life. Idi Amin Uganda's Idi Amin had a terrifying reputation while he ruled from 1971 to 1979. Estimates placed his net worth at around $100 million. But the leader likely had millions more he had no way. He owned a Mercedes-Benz 600, but was more fond of his Citroen SM he owned seven models of this same car. They cost upwards of $13,000 each in the 70s and today, he can go for more than $50,000 are mean frequented luxury hotels but he's more known for his love of private property. He had multiple ritzy residences, including hunting lodges. Kitty Po Safari Lodge, now known as the Control Room, Lodge, Kitty Po was one of his favorites. He entertained international friends there and enjoyed hunting for sport. He also spent time at Pitkova Lodge or Hideaway in Murchison Falls National Park. 
He turned this place into a private retreat, and was responsible for the elephant population dwindling from 9,000 to just 160. Due to his extensive hunting on the grounds that two-story lodge could accommodate 160 people. Each room had a balcony overlooking the Nile Junction, and guests would have access to a large swimming pool. The main building had a restaurant and lounge as well as a bar and terrace. Our main would reportedly use this place to smuggle ivory and gold in order to trade for arms. Amin frequented the island have McCusick he had a vast 23-acre property in Lake Victoria that he called Paradise Island. It was lavish and luxurious, but surrounded by crocodile-infested waters. Our means reputation for terrorizing people of this private resort resulted in it being listed for just £214,000, which is just over $290,000 today. The Ugandan dictator spent the rest of his life in a luxury home in the Saudi Arabian city of Jeddah. His white villa was in an area reserved for the richest Arab oil moguls. He spent his time there fishing and swimming in the Red Sea and watching television. He had five satellite dishes installed in his home to provide for his many flat screens. He would get his favorite Ugandan foods flown to him right up until he passed away peacefully in his Saudi Arabian mansion in 2003. There you have it, the secret lavish lifestyles of some of the world's most powerful leaders. Which of these dictators do you think had the most eccentric spending habits? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to World Wealthy for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.